Hi Floss Tube. I'm Laura and I'm the Curry He Stitcher. I'd like to welcome you to my channel. Uh, it's October 6, 2019, and this is a channel about cross stitch. I'd like to thank Misty Purcell with Luminous Fiber Arts for shouting me out on her last video. She is an Instagram friend of mine and she um, uh, would always comment. She'd take the time to comment and encourage me on my post. And uh, she, she's so busy. I mean, I think of her often and, and kind of worry about her that she's uh, doing so much. But she's a college professor and she is a fabric dyer, a cross stitch designer. Um, she has her own Etsy shop, and so she takes care of filling orders and shipping them out. And she's very active on all the social media platforms, and she's just, and she cross-stitches um, her stuff and other people's stuff. She's really amazing. I think a lot of people follow her and know who I'm talking about, but if you have not checked her out, I'm going to link her channel below. Um, she's definitely um, somebody that you would want to follow. Um, next, I'd like to explain my uh, name change. I changed my name from I Crochet with Cat Fur to Curry Stitcher. Um, I wanted it to, I wanted my name to reflect who I was. Um, we no longer have pets. And I live in Tacoa, Georgia. So Mount Currahee is just right here in Tacoa. And um, it was the site for World War II paratroopers and soldiers to be trained at Camp Tacoa. And it was the inspiration for the Band of Brothers miniseries. And um, we, uh, that's our claim to fame. So, Mount Currahee is um, where I'm getting my name from. Oh, and also, it's a Cherokee word that means stands alone. And it's so appropriate for that mountain because the mountain is not uh, huge or anything, but it's in the middle of a valley. So, it stands alone. So, it's very appropriate. And, um... I, when I was Googling to see how my name would come up in YouTube, I ran across a video that if you're interested in world, not World War II history, but um, patriotic, uh, inspirational soldier stories, um, the name of the video is what Curry means. But it's in regard to a soldier who was wounded in Afghanistan. And General Petraeus visits him in the hospital. And it's just really interesting. I think it's three and a half minutes long. Um, and so I'm going to link that. I put a link in the description box for that video. It's very interesting. Um... The next thing I like to talk about is the stitching meetup that on September 28th in Gainesville. Um, this is the first time I ever met with real live stitchers and it was wonderful. Um, seeing everybody's projects in person, there's just no substitute for seeing uh, needlework in person seeing the thread, seeing the fabric, seeing the patterns are just so much be more beautiful in person than they are um, just looking at a photograph. So I really, I am thrilled to have found this group and I plan on going back, um, you know, as often as I can. Now, um, because I'm new to the group, I, it may take me a couple of months to uh, get my, you know, get into the swing of things and feel like I have um, 
friendships close enough to ask these women to share their needlework with us. Um, but I am going to ask permission maybe after the beginning of the year, um, after I've known them a little bit longer, um, to show me their work, let me film their work, because um, it's, it's amazing. Um, I'm trying to talk several of them into doing their own floss tube channels because uh, it's just amazing what they, what they do. So, uh, let's get into stitching. I wanted to show you, first off, um, what I have FFO'd. I believe I told you in my last video that it's crooked. Um, that I had a few FFO's, and this is one of them. This is just, <clears throat> this is harvest time. It's a prairie schooler design. I've seen a lot of people stitching this on Instagram and everything. But this was so much fun to stitch. Um, I priscillified it. It may not look priscillified because um, it doesn't have a bow or anything on it. Uh, but the door was thrifted from Habitat. For humanity for a dollar and I um, painted it I chalk painted it a cream colored and I put my stitching on it and I didn't really like it so I went and got some flamingo red paint and put um, dark wax on top of it to kind of give it that age look and I think it brings out the red in the leaves and the trees and stuff real nice so um thank you priscilla you inspire so many people um but i was real happy with this so that's it for my ffo um now my whips um this is sue hillis designs the most wonderful feast and I showed you that last time and I will put links in the bottom of like you know what I stitched it on and and everything um, and I will show you where I was last time I have started the back stitching the pie and the pumpkin and some of the leaves and the corn husks are, are uh, back stitched but not the actual ears of corn some acorns are back stitched and I'm beginning to work on the Indian headdress but I love this design I hope to have it finished by uh, Thanksgiving this year. Um, I probably could have uh, finished that if I had worked on that, but I wanted to mix it up a little, so I, um, you know, I didn't work on that exclusively. Next thing I worked on was Silver Quarry Sampler's Christmas List. And I'll put where I was before. I, I didn't make a ton of progress, but I made some. Um, this is what I took to the stitching meetup. And I worked on these candy canes right here. And that was a mistake to try to do a, a stitching meetup. I think I should have tried to work on that. Um, you know, done the outline and filled in, but as you know, meeting with other stitchers, it's all new to me, so I wasn't paying attention too good. <laughs> so, but I had so much fun. Um, I changed the 2017 in the little present to 2019, and I got the W and the R, and it's going to say wrapping presents. So, I'm down to right there. Yeah, right there. 
So I'm over halfway, and I'm hoping that I can get that finished by Christmas. So those, that's what I'm going to concentrate on are those um, two whips. Um, I'm pretty sure I can get the Sue Hillis design done uh, before Thanksgiving and maybe possibly the Christmas sampler, um, my Christmas list done by Christmas. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> but I've set aside my grandson's docking uh, for that and I have changed my strategy. I realized that I'm not going to have any stitching if I just stitch in season, that I'm going to have to develop some kind of rotation because I definitely want uh, Christmas stitching and Thanksgiving stitching, if nothing else. Um, I want tons of it in my house because so, I have family in and I just want it to feel homey and festive. So that's my plans. Um, Katie Kearney, she's a new floss tuber. I'm going to put a link uh, in the description box to her channel. She is so funny and so sweet. I, I understand everything she talks about sitting at the cool table, like not wanting to, um, go into a needle workshop and pick out fabric and she didn't feel like she was good enough to sit at the cool table <laughs> so and i told her i said i really understand that um you know because so many people have been doing this for years and years and they um have so much work that they've done and um you know they're just very very cool we're we're impressed by so many stitchers but um so katie i've commented on her videos and tried to encourage her and i i would like for uh everyone uh, you know if they have time to go check her out she's hilarious she's so funny and sweet she stitches for all her friends uh she stitches with for her grandmother's friends. I mean, she's just amazingly generous. But the reason I'm bringing her up is she showed this. It's a dimensions kit, the Christmas Village ornaments. And I had it, and I told her I had it, and she said we need to stitch our village together. So, um, I don't know when she plans on starting. I know her schedule is a lot busier than mine because she works and um, evidently she's doing some kind of project for, uh, like she's the go-to person for a lot of answers about this uh, meetup with a bunch of people <laughs> that are going to need her help. So anyway, uh, she, but she plans on starting the church. I have started this one, um, and I've kind of, I think the bakery, I've got a few stitches in. Um, I'll show you where I'm at on that and explain it. Um, but the house I've started in, and then this is the bakery. And the reason I didn't finish this and I started this was it was an experiment between stitching in a hoop and stitching in hand. I love the rhythm of stitching in hand um, and I wanted to see if my stitches laid as good as the, they do you know when I stitch in a hoop and the answer is I'm really not sure. I think it depends on um, fabric, how stiff the fabric. It seems like stiffer fabric, it's easier to get the tension right. So I think, you know, the jury's still out on that. For me, I'd, I don't know. I know um, there's some pieces that I feel like I definitely need a hoop uh, to keep the tension right. So anyway, um, that's what that is for. And Katie and I are going to uh, build a village 
And the next thing I want to show you is I watched Liz Matthews. She's the daughter of Kathy Barrick, and I um, watched her, I think it was her fourth Floss 2 video, and I loved her, I loved her work. She does a lot of punch needle, and I was just like, man, that is so beautiful. And so it inspired me to go get my The Farms of Hawkwar and Hollow out and start it. Um, so I do have a new start. So this is being added to my whip bag. Um, but this is how far I got. And that doesn't look like a lot, but that is 92 stitches. Um, just that straight line. That's not counting those. <laughs> So it's a lot of stitches. It's on 40 count uh, parchment by Weeks Dye Works. And I'm stitching one over two with the DMC threads. And I'll show you where this is on here. Okay, I stitched, I stitched this bird and these cows and part of the hill. Anyway, I love it. It's fun to stitch uh, because it is, uh, you know, blocks of colors, so you feel like you're getting somewhere, um, you know. And it's just gonna be, it's gonna be a long time. I mean, this is gonna be a whip for a long time, but that's okay. I, I'm having a ball with that, I love it. And that's all I worked on this week. Um, I do have a few pictures to put at the end about uh, a trip to the zoo we made on Saturday. I got to see my two of my three grandchildren, and we had a blast. We had a we had a really good time. But I came home Saturday night last night, and I was tired. So I took a little power nap, and then I woke up, and I thought, I need to do something. Um, but I, so I worked on this afghan. Uh, it's crochet, and it's corner to corner. And I felt like it needed, I used this last year to decorate for my um, fall decorations. And I felt like it needed a little more length if somebody actually wanted to use it um, and put their feet, like I, like I like mine long enough to where somebody can put their feet under it. <laughs> so anyway, um, I'm gonna put a link for a corner to corner YouTube tutorial. Um, I, I found this, I mean, how I came to find this was on Instagram. One of my Instagram friends had, um, had made a blanket like this. And I just started Googling to see if I could figure out, you know, um, how to do it. <laughs> so everything's on YouTube, all tutorials. A lot of things that you want to know about are on YouTube. So, anyway, I hope this video was not too long. Um, I am going to put those links in. So, when I upload, I will upload it uh, on my iPad, but then I will put the notes in after the video is uploaded on my computer. It's just easier to copy and paste that way. I don't like typing on my iPad. So I hope y'all have a happy stitching week and get everything done you want to get done. It, that never works for me, but I always wish it for my friends. <laughs> so thank you for stopping by. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.
Gracias.